Hi, John Dursig here with the Ohio Department of Transportation in the Office of CAD and Mapping. And uh, today I'm going to go over you know, all these buttons at the top of the general summary sheet. Um, in the previous video, I kind of went over the basics on how to use, but now I'm going to go through all of the sheet, all the buttons, and in detail how to use all its features. So. What I have is just kind of some sample data. You know, as you can see, is stuff I explained in the last video with being able to use roadway continue and continued and the alternates, as well as the structure stuff. Hopefully, you guys can see this okay. As well as the structure stuff I touched on in the last video, and just showing that. You know, if, if you do something like this where you're saying, you know, see this sheet for the structure quantities, you still need to make sure that, you know, you put them down below so that they're in there. Because any items not in the sheet don't make it to the data sheet. Okay, so as you can see, I have you know, contract ID filled out. It'll be county and then your PID or if it's a district wide project the D and then your two digit district number followed by the by the PID. Um I went over kind of these in the the last video but I'll touch on it. You know you can change your sheet columns and part columns being displayed down here just by changing this number. It is unlimited so you can have as many as you need. The refresh data tab is going to populate this data sheet, which I went over in the last video. So the refresh item master button is something that should be done periodically um, on new releases of a new version of the spreadsheet. We will do it, but up here it'll say, item master last refreshed on, you know, I'll give a date and a time. And so what this does is all these formulas that pull the descriptions, units, you know, items, it's pulling from an Excel item master spreadsheet that's actually in this file, but it needs to be updated with current, you know, items. And so when you hit this button, it's going to pop up, ask you if you're sure. I'm going to hit no because it can take up to two minutes to refresh just because it's hitting the internet and it's updating the item master sheet. So it can take a while. So if you do hit that, you know, Excel's not going to crash. It's just going to take a while. And then when it's done, you know, it'll tell you. It, this will be updated here. Insert pay items I went over in the last video. pretty simple to use okay so as you're filling this general summary sheet out you might need to add an item in so we've added this insert row or multiple rows above selection so say you need a blank line you know right here if you select this row and then hit insert it inserts a line for you. If you you can also highlight multiple and it'll insert multiple lines. Same thing with delete. You know you can delete multiple lines. Be careful with that because if you highlight this and delete it, I mean there is no undo in VBA. All these buttons are using VBA. So every time you use one of these buttons, you are losing the ability to undo. As you can see, this is grayed out. So just be careful if you accidentally delete it, you know, there is no undo. Um, the create estimator sheet, I can, I'm going to go over another video because it's kind of long. The center headings button will center your headings for you. You know, if it's, if it's bolded, it's going to get centered. 
and it also centers the DJ and clip sheet. So it does both. And same thing with this button over here. It'll do, it'll center both sheets. There's insert spaces and delete spaces is something that I added. Um, I'll just, you know, if you hit delete spaces, this warning is going to come up. And um, what this does is if you have any formulas and links that you place, you know, in these cells for your quantities, you know, those are going to be replaced with just the value just because it would take a long time to run this if I didn't do it this way. So it gives you that warning. What it's going to do is it's basically going to remove all your blank spaces that you had. And then this insert spaces is going to give you some, it's going to give that warning again. And it's going to give you some options. Now, if you want to add a space every five items, you can check that box. If you want to add a space every time the three digit item code changes, you can check that. Or if you want both, you can check both. So I'm going to check, you know, add spaces every five items. It's going to go through and you'll notice, you know, it adds a space between every heading change and then see how there's five here, there's a space. So that's just something to help you insert your spaces. Um, currently the LND manual does say every five items, but so um, you can, you don't have to hit the delete spaces. It'll delete the spaces on, on the, if you wanted to redo something, you know. So it's a nice little feature, but warning, you know, these do get replaced with values. So that's those. Um, the next is the split line or split description line. And I added this because sometimes descriptions get really long and you can't fit it into one line. And so, you know, there is the options to make your description with, you know, longer or shorter using, you know, these pull downs right here. But sometimes you just need those columns, the space for the columns over here. So this should be used as little as possible, but it's still there. And the way it works is you're gonna wanna click on your description that you wanna split. And when you, and then you're gonna hit this split description line. What it does is it brings up this box and it's gonna populate with that description you had selected. So whatever was selected is the text that gets populated into this first. And then you can, you know, change it up however you want. And you can only have up to five. So when you hit okay, it's going to divide that up. So looks a little weird just because I didn't really type anything that should be typed in. But you notice that it's on two lines. The way the formulas work is it adds this M way over here. And so this M is letting the formulas know this is a multi-line description. Same thing with when you create the data sheet. That M is letting you know the code know hey, I need to combine these into one line so that when I refresh the data tab, it's only on one line. So here it is right here on one line. So your data sheet does not get messed up, but still you should really use this only when you really have to. Um, I added a spell check button because it is protected. So you can't just, you can't run the um, spell check. Um, it's only going to look at this column because that's the only column that really needs to be checked. And then uh, here's a cool thing I added new to this version is a, a sort selection. So what you can do is you can highlight a selection 
and when you hit this button, it's going to sort that in order. And the way it's going to sort it is going to look at the item code and then the additional description. And so only thing, what it can't handle is if you have a heading in your selection. You can't just highlight the whole thing and, and hit select. It's not going to work. If you have headings in your selection, it's going to tell you. Well, it's also going to give you that warning again that it's going to change these to values if you have you know, formulas over in this section. And then, because there's a heading in it, it's going to tell you, change the heading, cannot sort. So, you can just highlight a selection, hit sort. It's going to go through and it's going to sort it. It will get rid of the spaces, but it's sorted. So, that is a, a awesome little feature I think you guys are going to like. So, that's most of the buttons. Actually, it's all the buttons. Um, the last thing on this DJ and clip, yeah, I went over it in the last video, but I'll go over it again. Um, this verify DJ and clip button goes through and verifies your DJ and clip sheets. And so each page has this duplicate no duplicate page number and no missing page number so this gets changed when you run this if you are missing a page number that should be on a sheet it's going to let you know so and the way that works is it's figuring out okay here are all the items on sheet one which of the page numbers have quantities that should be on page one so then it's going to compare and say do you have that page number listed and if you don't, it's going to tell you you're missing this page. Same thing goes for duplicate pages. If you show a page twice on here, it's going to tell you you duplicated that page. A lot of times that only happens when you're combining pages. Like say you wanted to combine pages 11 and 12. Well, 12 is still there, so you might forget you need to get rid of that. And so that's what this verify will just tell you. And this laptop's really old and slow, so I think I'm freezing up. There it goes. So, so it's going to tell you, you know, sheet one has duplicated pages listed and no missing. So if you had other sheets that were missing stuff, it's going to tell you what sheets you need to look at. And then you can go to those sheets and you can see which pages were there. So this one's saying you duplicated page 12. So if there's more pages, it'll list them all. Same thing if you're missing a page, which we can do that. Now it says you're missing pages 11 and 12. So that's a nice little check for you because it's really easy to be missing a page, especially if you like change this from four to five. Well, you just cut off page 15 right there. So, you know, it's something to be conscious of. Now that you can customize each page, you're introducing, you know, more of an ability to, to, you know, forget something or mess something up. Man, this computer's slow. Okay. So that completes this video. Um, I guess the simple form has got most of the same buttons. I just got rid of some that you don't really need. Um, the next video, I'll go over how to um, import this into Estimator. So, see you then.